Coming up on Up at Noon, the heroes and villains we want to see in Star Wars Battlefront 2, the Disney Afternoon Collection takes us back to our childhoods, and video game coffee table books belong on our coffee tables. All that and more right now on Up at Noon Live. Hey! 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 hey. Uh, hello! Look at you! Look at you over Hi. there! Hi there! Mwah. Hello and what welcome! What cutie! You look great today. I think you look... Okay. Did you do something with your face? It's looking good. Are it's looking real oh, good. Oh, it's a smile. I get it. Anyway, welcome to Up at Noon. I'm Max Scoville. This is Brian Altano, and this is a show we do every single week, and it's about all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Such as toys. Uh-huh. And different toys. Uh-huh. And sometimes books. We'll talk about the books later. Uh-huh. Uh, this week, I want to say we're sponsored by Cheese It Grooves. That's right. Uh, we actually have like a really cool uh, contest coming up. You can win a Switch, a copy of Zelda, and a whole lot of Cheese It Grooves. Uh, we'll have more information on that coming up. But first, you know how you can watch this show? Lots of ways. You Do can they watch know? us they on. Should know. They should know. It. Please, if you're watching this for the first time ever, it's probably weird to see a show that has this weird and loose of an opening. But that's. How this goes sometimes, you can watch us on PS4, Xbox One, Roku, Apple TV, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, what's that other one they keep putting in emails? Fernsder. Fernsder. You can yeah. watch us on Fernsder. That's the, uh, that's the metaphysical uh, Fern streaming service. Most Ferns don't have screens on them, but if yours does, it might be, it, we, you might be able to watch the show on it. <laughs> anyway, those are a lot of different platforms to yeah. be uh, trying to track the show on. So if you want to get in touch with us, use the hashtag up at noon. Yeah, I'm going to be watching that right here specifically. Yeah. Uh, a lot of activity going on on Twitter today. A lot of people are very excited about the holiday that is today. It's the 20th of the four. Yep. 420. Yep. As Congratulations. They say. And I know a lot of you out there are celebrating right now. I just want to make you all very understanding that THC stands for testicle hair cream. It will make you very sick. So just make sure you know what you're getting into, kids. Yeah. No, really, what today's all about is celebrating the fact that April is almost over. Yes. And then summer pretty much starts. Mm -hmm. That's uh, when the May Lion shows up. Yeah, the May Lion shows up. Uh, that's a very popular... Uh, I swear we we did plan a show today. It yeah. seems like we didn't. Yep. Um, Max, we got awesome news over the weekend uh, from Celebration. Not only a new trailer for The Last Jedi, but uh, one for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, we're huge fans of that game, the original. The ones that way back in the day as well. Uh, just absolutely love Star Wars, as you can see, by our clothes and yeah. Our, our, yeah. our desk. This and is actually else. an alien. It's from the movie Aliens. Aliens are in alien. Star Wars. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Star Wars Battlefront 2 is coming out. Uh, this fall, it's what, November 17th? Yep, that's, that's awesome. PS4, uh, Xbox One, and PC. This strikes me as a much more ambitious title than the last one. Uh, they've already said that there's gonna be, I don't know, I think there's gonna be more em emphasis on heroes and villains. Yep. That was a mode in the first one, but it kind of started out and there was only like six heroes and villains and then they gradually added them via DLC. But I think they're really doubling down on it this time around. Uh, we got a trailer that showed off. Uh, I think we've got we've got Kylo Ren, we've got Yoda, we've got Darth Maul, uh, right. Luke Skywalker. I don't think they've confirmed a ton of other ones, but I think it's safe to assume that probably some of the ones we saw in the last game are going to show up again. I imagine you know I would Han hope Solo, so. Han Solo, Boba Fett, probably. I think we're also getting um, we're getting Rey for sure. Yep. Um, but we've got, of course. Um, Brain damage, because we watch Star Wars too much. Uh, and so we've got a crazy wish list of characters that we want to see. Obviously, Battlefront 2 is actually pulling from uh, all eras, not just the uh, original trilogy. So we're getting prequel era stuff and Force Awakens era stuff. Uh, so that's that's like a pretty huge cast of characters to be drawing from. Yeah, totally. Uh, and I think, Nine movies. Yeah, I think there's some obvious characters we're going to show up. Obviously, if you've got Darth Maul, you're probably going to get Obi-Wan. Uh, you're probably going to get Anakin. Uh, that's kind of a given. Uh, I want to see General Grievous. First yes. and foremost, uh, I think it's really cool to have like you know humanoid characters who've got their you know their force powers or their special skills or whatever as as heroes or villains. But it gets kind of boring when you're just playing as like a a guy or a lady or whatever. General Grievous has four arms and four lightsabers and uses blasters, and he's like a crazy man who runs up walls. I don't know how you get him into a game without totally breaking it and making it completely unbalanced. Well, he does but... have a weakness. He has emphysema. Yes, yes, that's true, and and. Terrible. Uh, I do love that he's just like, he's, he coughs a lot. I hope that if they add him in the game, he coughs. I yeah. don't think that's an important key thing he kills somebody. to the character. Uh, now, of course, uh, Grievous is cool. I just said, obviously, we want more exciting characters. But what's more exciting than having a purple lightsaber, which is what, of course, Mace Windu does? Uh, I just want to see Sam Jackson rendered in Frostbite. <laughs> um, I just want to see a hyper-realistic 4K Sam Jackson running around doing uh, force pushes and whatnot. 
Yeah, I love this because we um, didn't really get a ton of Jedi in the last one. Like, for example, we never got Obi-Wan. That was kind of weird. Which is like, I thought with even with the Death Star DLC, although yeah. his fight's not so great in A New Hope on the Death Star. Mm -hmm. um, every hey. week, you, you keep doing that. It's terrible. It's really awful. It just looks weird. You, it's just, okay. Can anyway. I just be angry? You can do that. Anyway, uh, stop that. Put that away. Anyway, so yeah, Mace Windu... He's a, he's a no-brainer. If I had to pick, I think, one Jedi from the prequel trilogy to th show up in there, just, yeah, give me a, it's just a purple lightsaber to mix things up. Uh, now, other prequel character who kind of doesn't really get a ton of, uh, a ton of like, praise for kind of just really being in, like, two scenes, Zam Wessel, who, yeah. of course, is the, bad, or the assassin who goes after Padme in Attack of the Clones. Uh, turns out she's a shapeshifter, uh, but she's got, like, a sniper rifle. She does a bunch of weird, like... I, I feel like, as a character, there's a bunch of video gamey stuff you could do with her, whether it's, like... Maybe having her be like really fast or having like a cloaking mechanism or something like that. And that's the cool thing about her too is that we don't have a ton of expectations because she's only in Attack of the Clones for a few seconds. Yeah. So uh, it'd be cool to sort of invent some new like attacks for her yeah. and some moves. Um, the shape-shifting thing is very uh, sort of interesting from the perspective of maybe she could turn into somebody that looks like she's on your team. Yeah, I and think at the last minute cool. betray you. Um, we did see that stuff with... Uh, like, Lando had that sort of double crossing mechanic yeah, that, that works cool. really well. Uh, Greedo had some similar things, so that'd be really cool. Yeah, now, she has that snail. Uh, while we're on the subject of uh, weird assassin ladies who showed up in the prequels for a very brief amount of time, Aura Singh is a character who was kind of like, she, she shows up for like five frames in episode one. Mm -hmm. And then proceeds to be like one of those kind of weird fan favorites. I think they kind of uh, really engineered her to be like the prequel era Boba Fett. And that kind of worked out because she wound up being in a bunch of comics. And then she showed up in Clone Wars actually training Boba Fett. So she's got her kind of her place in the EU and in just in the Star Wars universe. And she's just a cool ass design. Like she's got this, this bald lady with a sniper rifle. Can we That's go back awesome. to that picture of her real quick? She's got a chain wallet. That's yeah. odd. It was the 90s, man. Yeah. All right? It was the 90s. Yeah. People were into that. Yeah. It was great. She went to Woodstock. Saw Limp Biscuit. Everybody had a great time. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to put this out there. Let's do it. Get it done. Jar Jar Binks. Put him in Battlefront. Sure. Just, no, show him on the screen. <laughs> show the frog. Just show the whole frog. Stop messing with the opacity. Just get him up there. Thank you. Oh, there he is. There oh. No, put him back. Put him back. Thank yeah. you. Ah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, Jar Jar, you know, he's... He's so horny. He's, oh, oh. Look at him. Why would you say that? Because look what he's doing to that door. This weird duck-looking Roger Rabbit <laughs> character. So yeah, he basically he basically won the Battle of Naboo. He you know by accident, but like, I like the idea of Jar Jar being super overpowered, but nobody wants to play as him because he's annoying. What are you doing? What are you doing? Stop doing that, Brian. Stop that. That's his face. Look at that picture of him. You don't look anything like Jar Jar. Yes, I do. We both have no. He's hair. not holding a MacBook. That's a door. You don't That's know what door. that is. They, anyway. They use practical effects sometimes. Okay, all right, all right. So, yeah, Jar Jar, I think he'd be cool to have in the what game. What do you want him to do, lick things? Yeah, he could have that tongue. He could grab people. Okay. Uh, he could just trip and, and kill four people by accident. Uh, he could pass bills that are really just detrimental to everyone on the battlefield because he's a senator. Yeah. Hello, <laughs> fellagets. Anyway, um, while we're on the subject of, like, kind of hated characters who are too, you know, kid-friendly and totally shouldn't be in Battlefront, but I think should. Yes. I want to see Wicket. I want to see Wicket running around. I want him to be just, like, terrifying. I want him to be, like, impaling people on a spear and, like, eating stormtroopers and just, like, making, like, skull necklaces like like the Predator. Oh, can he <laughs> like, gnaw on that little corn nugget that he takes from Leia? Yeah, that Luna bar. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't do this again. That cheesy no, I, I love that idea. Like, I've said this many, many times. Like, the Ewok are not, like just happy little teddy bears. They are murderous cannibals. So yeah. that'd be great. They play yeah. on the drums. They use their the, the heads of their enemies as drums. So I love the idea of, of Wicket just being like super fast. Yeah. Like he, his whole thing is like he's just hard to hit because he's just moving all over the battlefield and he's mm -hmm. climbing trees and just ripping off heads and just getting real nasty. Now, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, I want to see Jabba. I want Jabba to be playable. I think that would be really impressive to be like, is he like a man or a tank slug? Like He'd be just, like a, a bullet sponge, right? Yeah, that would be crazy. Um, and obviously, we don't see Jabba doing a whole lot of like activity in the in the movies. Um, but that's not to say that Huts can't do that. There's actually a character who shows up in the comics who's like a like terrifying, totally ripped Hut who's yeah. got like spider legs. And he's like, at one point, he like I think he chokes somebody out. Yeah, that guy's awesome. Like, you're like, oh, that's right. Like, uh, you know, be cool. Could totally get in if, shape. If he could use the same like perks and items as everybody else, and they bring back jetpacks, and we just see like a jetpack the Hut just flying all over the place. 
It just flies off screen and explodes like one of those things in Tremors. Or he leaves behind like a slime that everybody slips on. Yeah. We're not yeah. game designers. Now, I wouldn't be your best friend if I didn't use every excuse possible to show Bib Fortuna on screen. My man! He's actually in this image right here. Oh! Get that out of here. See, that's a flying hut. Terrible. That's Get what that. it looks like. Go, show, this, show the picture. Just show this one right here. Yeah. This one. Show yeah. the picture. <laughs> Please. Thank you. Anyway, there's Bib oh. Fortuna on the side there. It's yep. like that weird prequel version where he just looks like kind of checked out. Uh, I want to see proper. Ah. I want proper Nawana Wanga Bib Fortuna running around Battlefront. I don't know what his deal would be. I don't know if he'd like he'd just rip you off or he'd well, stab you. Or I have a bunch of toys on his on my desk of Bib Fortuna except brain damage. And sometimes he comes with a knife, and sometimes he comes with a staff. Yeah. And every now and then they're like, ah, he gets a gun. Yeah. So I mean, sure, give him all those things. All those things that could be items and perks. What about this? What if he poisoned you and you're like, that didn't do anything, but then you suddenly died in the middle of the next round? Yeah. Or he's he brings like one out hit a, death, but it happens like later on. He brings out that bowl of delicious hot frogs for yeah. everyone to gnaw. He heals the whole team, assuming they want to eat frogs. Anyway, maybe we're getting a little bit off the beaten path here, but I think... Yeah, ran it in, man. I think we should get uh, Owen Lars in yeah, Battlefront. Sure. I think that he could be great. He could be demoralizing, because he'd be like, you're never going to get off this planet. I need your help with the next, the moisture harvest. Uh, I know that you applied for community college, but I'm telling you, your aunt and I can't put you up. You're going to have to apply for student loans. I like the idea of him... Uh Speaking over the match and being like, you're down 10 kills, you're never going to win, you're never going to get out of this town. Yeah, I think that's great. So anyway, also 8D8, that, that robot that tortures the other robots, I don't know how much good he could be against humans, but man, that would be great. If he just uh, this goes around sick, and just... Uh, foot fetishist he, torture, Yeah, he just man. tortures the gonk droids. Okay, and then finally, I'm, uh -huh. like we said, we're not game designers. We don't know how to make a good video game. Hopefully the fine folks at DICE can take some of our suggestions, roll them into Battlefront, and make it fantastic. I think this is a no-brainer. Dexter Jetster, owner of the grossest diner on Coruscant, I think he should run around the map giving everybody food poisoning because he's been scratching his ass and then serving food with it. That's a great idea. He's yep. also got four arms like Grievous so they, they can have a big fight with each other. Yeah, or they could do like a weird, weird dance. Or make out. And this concludes what we want to see in Star Wars Battlefront 2. We're sorry. Happy birthday. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Star Wars Celebration, uh, it was this weekend. It was awesome. Um, I got to be there. One thing uh, I didn't get to do was, I didn't get to meet Mark Hamill. Uh, no. I didn't... It's uh, hard to do that. Yeah, no, it's tricky. Uh, I, didn't, uh, I didn't get engaged. Uh, but somebody did. Um, there's a couple named Alex and Amanda. They're, uh, I think they're fans of Beyond. I think they, they watch our stuff. But, yeah, um, that's right. They, uh, they, the Alex tweeted at me over the weekend to kind of let me know a very special thing happened to him. Yeah. And uh, we wanted to share that story with you. Yeah. Because it's incredible. Yeah, so... And the real news is not covering it. Yeah. We're, 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 the, me we're the media. We're going to do it. That's right. We're going to break the rules. It's yeah. called journalism. Anyway, uh, here's Alex and Amanda. This is them at, uh, at Star Wars Weekends at Disney, Disney World. Um, they're obviously, you know, just... Big dorks, but they're cute. Yeah, I that's, gotta that's say, them I in the do... middle, they're not the the famous iconic mice on the sides. I'm gonna say I really don't like the look of uh, Luke and Leia in Episode Nine. It's it's not it's distracting. I think Disney's overstepping their bounds. It looks very sick. It's also real weird to see uh, Princess Leia with with the buns and the ears. It's just kind of too much there. Oh, but it you're would really right. it would really just kind of look terrible with either or. We're, anyway, getting, we're getting lost. Anyway, in the way. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Alex and Amanda, obviously they have a good time. Here's them. Just it's they clearly have a just a very. I mean, they've got a progressive relationship, but, yeah. you know, things things go well. Um, they got all dressed up for, for celebration, and they were cosplaying, running around the show floor, and then they uh, they waited in line, and they got to meet Mark Hamill. And Alex popped the question. What? Yeah, right in front of Mark, and I, he wrote an email to us and was basically like, uh, you know, the whole thing went by super fast, and he was kind of like, hey, just... Uh, so I think what he like sort of flashed it to Mark and was like, "Hey, I've got a thing I'm gonna do." And yeah, then... he basically said that he he brought the ring up, uh, and you and I have both proposed before. It is a nerve-wracking yeah. experience. Yeah, you have a plan in your head of what you want to do, and then almost none of it happens until you actually say what you need to say, which at that point is just da -da -da -da! yeah, and you hold the thing out, and then water comes out of your eyes. And yeah. You're... <laughs> so I think what he wanted to do was uh, cue Mark Hamill in that he had this ring and he had this plan, but he was basically just like, "Hey, I'm a big fan. I really respect you," and then just pop the question yeah um which Thank, is thankfully, kind of amazing he didn't miss you know he proposed to his now fiance he didn't yep. propose to mark hamill that could have gone very <laughs> sideways uh and yeah apparently mark was really cool about it he like he put it out on his, on his instagram yep. apparently they weren't the only couple that did this at celebration which is kind of adorable mm -hmm. um but yeah that's really sweet i think that's that's awesome um you know it says it in the title star wars celebration it, it is actually a celebration. It is totally yeah. one of, like, we've, we've been there. It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's one of the most positive, like, conventions I've ever attended. Everyone gets really excited, and even if you're, like, kind of like, the Clone Wars was, was stupid. I didn't mm -hmm. like it. By the end of the show, you're like, 
it's so cool to see so many people excited about the same thing and kind of all just, you know. And the cool thing about this one is that Mark Hamill tweeted it out. He put it on Instagram. Uh, they believe his sister took the picture. And then they give you a photograph when you go to one of these autograph session things. And they came back, waited in line to meet him again the next day, and he signed the picture, which I think means they are legally married in Star Wars now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that holds up in court. But that's just incredible. So, um... They say don't meet your heroes. I think you should, and then I think you should get engaged in front of them. Yeah. That, that'll really put their, their, their love to the test. Yeah. Anyway, Alex, Amanda, best of luck. May the force be with you. Uh, I'm glad Celebration went, went, for you, went well for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I was there, and I noticed a lot of things are just horribly inaccurate. So here is a deep look at how completely off-brand that show is, in spite of how positive everyone is. Let's take a look. Cabe is drinking blue milk. Everyone knows Cabe drinks jury juice. That's not canon. Pat Blue the Ewok isn't that tall or terrifying. A YT-1300 Corellian freighter is at least 18 times bigger than that. That's not canon. Darth Vader's not a chair. That's not canon. And you, and you, and you shouldn't have campfires inside the tent. That's not safe. Not canon. If you tried to cook hot dogs at a twin ion engine fighter, you would disintegrate the hot dogs. That's not canon. R2-D2 is not a purse. Or a clutch. <sighs> not canon. Yoda wasn't whatever that is. There were way more troopers in that scene. Boba Fett had legs, except for after he got out of the Sarlacc and they had to regrow one of his legs because it got melted off. But that's also not canon. That's legends. That's... Well, actually a cannon. Not cannon. Not cannon. Still a cutie anyway. Not cannon. This is cannon. Not cannon. The Death Star wasn't a toaster, and the Rebel Alliance wasn't a waffle iron. Not cannon. Hey, what's up? And welcome back. Now, we talk a lot about video games, which are, of course, the most high-tech, fun thing in the future. It's great, they're cool, they're colorful, but do you remember the books? Do you? There are those old ones that are full of paper, and they've got colors in them. They're like an old-fashioned version of video games, and they're difficult. Uh, the fine folks uh, over at Bitnet, Bitmap Books have been making some cool kind of video game coffee table books, uh, and these are, uh, these are all based on kind of different retro video game art. This one's called Arcade. It is the book of classic arcade game artwork, which is what it says on the cover, so maybe you read that at home. Uh, basically, this is entirely arcade cabinet marquees. Yeah. So, like, this is the top of the top of it. You know, the screen would be, like, kind of down here, and then you put quarters below that and push the buttons. Uh, this is some of my, like, just, like, favorite kind of video game art, because it's, like, weird. It's somewhere between, like, a, like an advertisement and, like, and like box art, you know? Yeah, and the important thing to note about a lot of these designs were they were designed before they were very accessible online or even online anything font libraries. So most of the font work here is done by hand. Yeah. Uh, when you go to look up what font it is, it's not a thing you can find. So I actually went to California Extreme, which is a, a, a convention we have here in, in the Bay Area every year in the summer. Uh, and there's just classic arcades there, and I went around taking pictures of all these things. So this really geeks me out, because I have like a library of like 20 photos. This is like dozens and dozens and dozens. Um, and they're all incredible. So it's this good mashing of like custom illustration, custom font work, logos, the kind of stuff you'd want to put on yeah. shirts, because it just looks really cool. Yeah, I feel like if you're if you're a graphic design student, this is like definitely something worth picking up. Yep. Uh, this is, I think it's about 25, 30 bucks. It's a, they're uh, based out of the UK. You can go to uh, bitmapsbooks.com, or uh, I think it's funstockretro.co.uk. Um, they've got a great selection of this kind of stuff. Uh, another book they sent over, I really like this one. This one's cool too. Uh, this is all about sprite work. So maybe if you're into game design or whatever, this is something worth knowing. It's got a lenticular cover. I think they've also done a uh, Commodore 64 version of this. Right. But this is specifically this is... about the NES. So if the uh, if yeah. you grew up after the big arcade boom, uh, you might like this one a little bit better. Yeah. This is uh, called NES Famicom: A Visual Compendium. I believe our colleague Sam Claiborne actually wrote a blurb in here. That's right. He did. Um, but this is much more of like a history book, um, and it's got kind of just like little bits of insight on how you know all these different games were made. There's obviously Ghosts and Goblins. Uh, and it's cool because they kind of also go into was that Life Force? Awesome. Uh, probably, yeah. They go into some of like the fan art and what it like, you know, what what it led to, what it inspired. Um, Ooh, ice hockey. It's just really cool to see like 
I don't know, just like a, a kind of deep dive on some of the, you know, some of the art in there. Yeah, I'm a big fan of NES sprite work. Um, I think that the artwork that was sort of derived from the limitations of that platform created a lot of very incredible things. Um, we're going to play uh, DuckTales on the Disney Afternoon Collection a little bit, and you'll get to see some of these games in action. But I also love uh, this series, right? Like the Black Box series, mm -hmm. the uh, Famicom uh, originals. Yeah. Like, uh. this is just gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. Look at that. So, like, I mean, check out Ninja yeah. Game. You know? So it's, like, it's, not just, it's not just the sprite work. It's also just really... This is the history of the games. And yeah, it's just a, a celebration of the NES and all the art specifically that went into it. Yeah. Um, you'll get to see Let's Plays of these games. Uh, we've been doing them for years on IGN. They're all over YouTube, but to actually sort of like deep dive into a celebration of the art that went into these games, uh, look no further than this book. Yeah. This is really, really cool stuff. Yeah. So funstockretro.co.uk or just bitmapbooks.com yeah. or just, you know, consult your local library or what have you. Uh, now, we've got something very special going on here. Um, she's at Grooves. They're very crunchy. They're, they're, they're crisp, and you, and you bite them, and it makes a sound. Uh, there's a game called Chicken Scream, I believe. Uh, we had uh, some of our colleagues take a little bit of a challenge. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're some weird dudes, and occasionally mm -hmm. we like to have like a nice, a nice dare prepared. Yeah, uh, basically, it's a competitive office. Um, we, took, uh, we took Brandon Hunt and, uh, and, and Cisco, who work over on our social team, and we made them play Chicken Scream by crunching into the microphone. This is a very, a very weird, weird thing to do. Um, now we're going to tell you guys how you can win uh, a Nintendo Switch and a copy of Breath of the Wild and a six-month supply of Cheese It Grooves. Uh, you can actually uh, enter to win. It's go.ign.com/cheeseitgrooves uh, and you know find out more there. But in the meantime, let's see exactly how this weird, weird dare went. You're really good at, at making noises when you eat cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, so so that's a game where it's just entirely based on sound. Yeah, it's it's a very sensitive system they have in place. So if you're kind of humming along right. with the thing, trying to walk because there's those spikes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you say the slightest bit of ah, so you're jumping like immediately. So you couldn't like play this on the train because <laughs> there's just ambient noises, loud clacking. Oh yeah, as soon as the, the train door shut, then yeah. or you're, you're now reached hopping. the station. Yeah. The chicken topping. Yeah. Well, you use snack foods to play a video game, and for that, I will crown you mm. Mm. king of the king of the cheese at grooves. The king of cheese. I think you, I think you look great. And now, uh, legally, I don't know if you read the fine print. You have to wear that for the rest of the week. Yeah. The only way to not wear it is to eat your way out of it. Yeah. Well, uh, provide enough. Cheese at Grooves. That's well, true. If you want enough uh, Cheese at Grooves to keep you going for quite some time, once again, head to go.ign.com slash Cheese at Grooves. We're giving away a Nintendo Switch console with a copy of Breath of the Wild, which is 
more than six months of video game, but also six months of Cheese It Grooves. You look like a legitimate insane person. I love it. Well, we'll bow down before it's, me. It's fetching, but also terrifying. Well, I... The king of the cheese. <laughs> We are in the presence of royalty. Anyway, uh, Brandon, thank me. you, thank you so much for uh, for competing in this. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> insane challenge. You put, you put you. the eating and competing. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, thanks, man. I have nothing. I have nothing. Yeah, that's, I, anyway, get, get me a crown. Yeah. So cheese at grooves available where snacks Take are it. sold. I don't need it. No, it's fine. Just, you can, you no, can I think you can wear this. There we go. Ooh, look at him. You look cool. I Much more of a kinglier, really cool. kinglier man than I. I think, I think it's, it's a yeah. thing. I look like the uh, the lion from uh, the R Disney's Robin Hood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, just go, go go away. Sorry. Go on, shoo shoo. Thank you so much, Brandon. Yep. All right. Really ate that cheese. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, we talked about the Disney Afternoon Collection. Yep. We're gonna uh, play it in a few minutes. Yeah. It's it's, it's a bunch of old classic uh, '90s Disney games all rolled together. Uh, we had those guys on the show, and they sent over uh, a press kit, mm -hmm. which I guess is what you'd call that. Uh, yeah, normally, I, I, I think normally... that like press kits are—it's sort of an interesting sentence, right? Because when you hear press kit, you're like, "Oh, that's boring." It's probably like a piece of paper in a folder, right. and you know, there's like some pictures and maybe a USB stick with sure, a thing sure. on it. I mean, sometimes it's just an email. In this case, well, it's... this is what they went with. Yeah. Uh, this. In, it brought me back incredibly to the 90s and the 80s. This is a really, really special press kit. Um, so a couple years ago, DuckTales re was re-released by WayForward. They put out a lunchbox. Uh, if you're still going to school and you're bringing that lunchbox, you probably need a backpack. This is so like a kid's, ba this is a kid's backpack. Yeah. Uh, so included in this, there is a Trapper Keeper folder yep. covered in Tailspin and Rescue Ranger stickers. Mm -hmm. And within that, more stickers because we're big children. And then of course, uh, just here's now here's the the actual press release. Like that's the that's the grown up boring part, uh, but it's still covered in Disney drawings. Yeah. Uh, they also included some completely ridiculous stuff in there. Yeah. So on the front is really cool. We've got this uh, sort of Baloo from Tailspin pin over here. These uh, lenticular pins here that go from showing the game logo to Darkwing Duck to uh, this little Scrooge McDuck pixel pixel thing here. But here. on the inside, in case you're hungry for some snacks. Uh, there's a tape deck, which is also a USB stick, and ooh, ring pops, ring pops, some candy bracelets, bracelets. Candy yeah, bracelets. candies. More importantly, the, the 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 most important thing in here is a snap bracelet, which I haven't used in a very long time. But there it is, a Disney afternoon yeah. snap bracelet. So um, yeah, really cool stuff in I, here. I gotta say, like, I mean, game companies don't normally go this completely just out of control with this kind yeah. of thing, but I feel like they did a they did a pretty good job. It's a uh, very on brand for Disney Afternoon, uh, and the game is out. So if you're, uh... ow, that hurt so much. <laughs> Did it really? No, not really. I'm just messing okay. with you. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna stab you with this pin later. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Disney Afternoon uh, collection. That's on uh, what's on PS4, Xbox One, PC. And PC. Uh, yeah. And of course, everyone's hoping it comes to Switch. Yes, so we are. Maybe it will. Uh, but let's take a look. Hey boys and girls, it's Brian and Max from Up at Noon, and this is a different noon, the Disney Afternoon. I didn't know how to I didn't practice that one. That, yeah, clearly. That it's was fine. pretty bad. Uh, Disney Afternoon Collection is a new game by Capcom, or should I say a collection of games, retro games that originally appeared on the NES, all created by Disney in conjunction with Capcom. Uh, and these were uh, some of the coolest games of our childhood, and they put them all together in this awesome little package. Yeah. It's 20 bucks, PS4, Xbox One, PC. No Switch yet. Yeah, really that seems like it might out. happen, because these all were originally on, you know, on Nintendo. Yeah. Um, so let's take yeah, a look. What's funny is that there was there's kind of a, a modern expectation that licensed games kind of suck. Yeah. Uh, there are exceptions, obviously. You know, you get stuff like uh, like the Arkham games. Uh, but uh, in this case, uh, this was this was before that was that was the rule. Yeah. And Ducktales is amazing. Ducktales is kind of the uh, really the precursor to Shovel Knight. I feel like is yeah. the most most clear comparison because you hop on your little cane like it's, a weird. It's a very non traditional platformer. Um, and while we're here, I wanted to show off some of the things that this that this game can do. Yeah. Um, this is. This is not just like a like a lazy port. Like this is yeah. So we've this got is a really gorgeous kind of collection. Different filter options, right. which I keep screwing up. And then we've got uh, you can do full screen, widescreen, whatever you need. You know. So there we go. Yeah, turn that filter off. Border on off. Oh, cool. Okay. I'll turn it off. For yeah, now. Turn it off. Saving data. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, Still this was on. not a thing that we had in the '90s. Oh man. Okay, that looks really clean. Yeah. Man. So yeah, I believe they built a brand new emulator for this. Um, this was worked on by some fine folks at Capcom, including Frank Spaldi, who's been on Up at Noon before. Uh, 
and I just, I really dig it. Like, there's, it's just a really cool collection. So, we're not going to beat all these games, because they're actually pretty hard. Mm -hmm. um, but, that's but, the good news, is that you can, you can rewind. Yeah, look at that. Well, that didn't help. Go back to when that snake didn't kill you and have it harm you. So DuckTales, a uh, non-traditional, non-linear platforming game um, where you basically have to collect keys in all these different levels yeah. and uh, move on to the next thing. And when you get them all, uh, you fight a boss and you beat the game. And if you want to cut through all that stuff, you can actually just jump right into a boss rush mode, which is pretty rad. So I grew up... Uh... I was more of a Super NES kid than an NES kid, so a lot of this stuff kind of was a little bit before my time, but I played a ton of NES ROMs uh, right. in, in like high school and, and college, uh, and DuckTales has always always stuck out to me as one of those ones that like, it might have kind of looked sort of rudimentary, but yep. the controls are just really fun. Yeah. Uh, and Rescue Rangers, on the other hand, is uh, one of the first kind of really properly good like co-op games, right? Yeah, so the interesting thing about this one is I'm actually booting up Retro Ra Re Rescue Rangers 2. Uh, which is a game I never played. I played the original all the time with my brother, like, couch co-op. It's an awesome game. This one came out in 94, which was the same year the PlayStation came out. That's insane. Yeah, we've all kind of moved on to the Super Nintendo and other systems by then. Yeah. Um, this one actually has slightly worse graphics, but... That's bizarre. Yeah. That looks like, that looks like Pokemon. Yeah. It's okay, so they've got, like, they've got, like, gorgeous color for, a yeah. for an 8-bit game, though. And the cool thing about this one is it sort of um, precedes a game like um, New Super Mario Brothers in that when you play co-op, you can pick up your teammates and throw them. So, like, you think about Super Mario Brothers, the original, uh, it wasn't until Mario 2 where you could actually start throwing projectiles and picking up things hmm. and tossing them uh, outside of fireballs. Whoa, look at that. Now, does this, uh, this still has the rewind and everything? Yep. Wow, look at that. That's not a great noise. Mm -mm. So there's a, this filthy rat is just putting his dirty ass feet all over this. Yeah, kitchen. this is just this is this entire level is just a massive health code violation. Yep. I'm pretty sure like chipmunks are one of those animals that carry the plague, but no one ever told you that. Now, Max, you were a big fan of uh, Darkwing Duck back in the day, right? Yeah, Darkwing Duck was you know so I, I watched I watched that show a lot. I don't yeah. remember a whole lot of it. I remember like there was a dude named Taurus Bulbo who I thought was really funny. Mm -hmm. It's just like a, a bull who was mean. Uh, <laughs> They had Gizmo Duck, but uh, yeah, I mean, I got into Darkwing Duck around the same time as Batman the Animated Series, and I was like, which yeah. one came first? Weird thing, Darkwing Duck was out, I think, a year before Batman the Animated Series. Uh, Interesting. It was kind of an odd, like, what was the like, what was the the origins of Darkwing Duck? Because they were like, yeah, he's sort of like the shadow or the spirit, but he's a duck. Yep. And he's an idiot. Uh, I remember this game. Okay. It's... So this Let's game's got some dangerous, some really great uh, animation. I really love the um, the character designs, yeah. considering they're just little sprites, right? But they're pretty chunky, which I like. Um, you also <laughs> get a gun in this game, which yep. is uh, very different than say something like Ducktales or yeah, that was sort of an odd choice for uh, you know for a, for a Disney a Disney thing. I think they made toys of that gun too. That he had that weird like it just looked kind of like a little megaphone and. Yep. Uh, yeah, you went around and hung out with Launchpad McQuack, which is weird because he was also like he also worked for the Ducktales, the, the you know Scrooge McDuck. See, so yeah, that's that's Darkwing Duck. Yeah, Darkwing um, Duck's kind of whatever. Like we said, Time Attack, Boss Rush. Uh, there's also Tailspin. We'll take a look at that one real quick. This is another one I didn't play yeah. as a kid because it came out a little bit later. In, Dude, they in were doing life. some weird stuff back then. Yeah, that was kind of an early like cinematic universe, really, because Ducktales and Darkwing Duck were in the same kind of universe. Launchpad would... crossed over to a bunch of them. Yeah. But then meanwhile, this is basically the just the jungle book, except they're sky pirates. Yeah. What? It's really weird how that oh, what was that? Like Okay. So the weird thing about this one is in being a shmup is that you can shoot diagonally, which is a little weird. Yeah, that's kinda wacky. Um, okay. And obviously this is works very, very fun with the uh, rewind feature here. But one of the things I really want to show off in this package is not necessarily just the games, because I think they're really awesome, but also, um, and you can go backwards, which is odd. That's not how planes work. So, my favorite thing about this package is the fact that you can dive into the sound select, which oh, wow. is basically just all the original. Oh, put, original on, the, put on the moon level from oh, uh, the yeah. tales. Ah. Oh. This is so good. Yeah. I have my first kiss to this song. This I guess my wanna, I kinda wanna listen. Let's look at this. This is great. They play this at my wedding. It's not true. I might play that at my wedding. You probably should. 
Um, so let's check out the gallery, which is really, really cool. Um, so this shows concept art and how it became uh, stuff that you saw in the game. So they were handed a drawing and then they turned it into this. Whoa. Which is really cool because uh, you get to see like basically the creative liberties they took A. That's and B, awesome. Uh, working with the limitations. And I, I think looking at Darkwing Duck, like they did a pretty amazing job mm -hmm. of that. Considering you know, that there's like just a certain amount of colors you can use yeah. in pixels. It's funny because you see now a lot of people Nailed do, it. you know, they do pixel art and stuff. And I think there's kind of an ex expectation that it's more of an, a, like a mosaic approach. Yep. But obviously people were still doing like sketches beforehand to kind of be like, here's what I want this to look like. Yeah. And that's why these games I think hold up aesthetically because they weren't just like, eh, we'll just put a bunch of dots there. It's like, let's try to you know, shrink something down. Exactly, yeah. So uh, you probably, if you grew up in the 90s or the 80s, uh, and you remember the, the old Disney afternoon, you've probably seen a lot of these drawings before. Um, some of them are the box art, but some of them are like promotional artwork, which I really, really dig. Um, over here, we'll get to see some of the power-ups that oh, you find in the gorgeous. game. Those are gorgeous. And a lot of this stuff ends up in the manual because like taking a picture yep. of a sprite wasn't very ideal. No. So these are higher illustrators to do this kind of stuff, which I really love. These um, look a lot like the, uh, the old Zelda. Just in terms of like the coloring, I feel like it's yeah. Sick. Now, finally, over here we get to see uh, some of the promotional material. Now, this was, I believe, drawn by KJ Inafune. If uh, Frank Cifaldi's tweet is correct, huh. as you can see, they've all got that sort of Mega Man boss. Oh eyes. yeah, totally. Very cool. Um, these are the original ads, like the marketing campaigns for them and stuff like that. Uh, some ending screens here, if you if you're not afraid of spoilers, huh. we get to see some ports to the uh, the Game Boy version. Oh, and, neat. Yeah, so I, mean, I I love these, right? Like you saw, you probably saw these in comic books. Here are the oh, ads cool. they got in, in Japan. Yeah, so really awesome stuff. So this is the Disney Afternoon Collection. Yeah, I love it. It's twenty bucks, Xbox One, PC, and PS4. Hopefully, Switch yeah. soon. Uh, oh, yeah, cool. Here's the screencast. Oh, I wish the they had. I wish they had the videos, the commercials. That would be that would be like the perfect thing. Yeah. But this is cool because, like, honestly. I love all this stuff historically. I love all the kind of behind the scenes things and the, the concept art, but I don't think I'd actually like take the plunge and buy like a, you know, an art book. Yeah. Uh, so this is like a nice kind of happy medium. Like yeah. that's cool to see the packaging, yep. but not to have it taking up space on a book bookshelf. Exactly. And you get to play the games too. Yeah. So that's the Disney Afternoon Collection out now, 20 bucks. I'm Brian, that's Max, and thanks for watching. And welcome back. Uh, we actually got a, a, a little comment from uh, GameShark03 on Twitter, who tweeted at us using the hashtag up at noon. Great so year for GameSharks. Game yeah, it's a good one. Uh, it's just the, the, the last year they did cheat codes, but they were good. Uh, GameShark says, hey, can I get a birthday shout out on the show today? That would be the best birthday gift. Love all the work you both do. I want to apologize. We don't do birthday shout outs. No, legally, um, we cannot. It's, it's against our policy. So uh, even though it is your birthday, GameShark03, uh, and we hope you have a good day, we can't. Uh, actually wish you a happy birthday. Yeah, not be, with those two yeah. words in synchronicity. We cannot right, say happy right. birthday, Game Shark 03. We hope today is fine, just for a, as a regular day. As mm -hmm. far as birthdays go, uh, that's all you. So uh, best of luck with that. We can we can uh, bookend it. We can say happy, have a great day, and I hope everything's going well on this, your splendid day of birth, birthday, yep. Game Shark 03. Yeah. Anyway, uh, sorry. On a more fun note, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is the Figma Samus Aran figure. This is uh, kind of based. You were saying on the other, you know, the other M model. Other this, M, yeah. You, this, whether or not you remember that game very well, yeah. I personally don't. We did get some cool merchandise out of it. Specifically, this figure is the best thing. <coughs> I think I'm done. Right there. Yeah. yeah this one's uh, hyper articulated. Figma does a I lot. I got of, choked uh, up thinking about other M. Yeah. They do a lot of really good uh, Nintendo figures. They do the the, the cool <coughs> different links and stuff. Uh, I think they did a. Um, I think they did like a solid snake from Metal Gear Solid 2, which is yeah. weird because that's like the only Metal Gear in that line. Uh, I think they were kind of going for a, a the Smash Brothers collection. I think so. But the really cool thing is that you probably remember Metroid as Metroid Prime, which is I think some of the best Metroid games ever made, specifically 1 and 3. 2 is... Uh, yeah. It's all right. But Figma's making a brand new figure uh, based on the Metroid Prime Samus model, which is one of my favorite designs. Uh, yeah. The cool thing about that is it's incredibly articulate. It's the kind of thing you're going to want to put on your desk. It's like a little more high end yeah. than say something like well, an let's, Amiibo. Let's take a little comparison here. Obviously, yeah. at a glance, if you if you don't have both of them in front of you, it's kind of hard to tell them apart. So let's jump from this back to the 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 Samus we got on our desk here. Obviously, these got mm. she's got the um, the the shoulder ridges there, and yep. the, the the cannon is a lot uh, it's a lot bigger. Yeah, uh, I think there's just a lot more kind of like line work on the uh, on the Prime version, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still sort of holding out for like a more gnarly 
uh, Super Metroid version. Yep. That said, this is awesome. If you look on the right there, you can see that her like her cannon actually opens up. Yeah, she's got interchangeable parts for her arm cannon, which is great. Yeah, she fell down. She just saw the reviews for Other M. Oh, boy. Um, but what I love is it comes with a stand, so you can do these really awesome action poses. This comes out this fall. It's in October. Uh, it's about $60, $65, depending on where you get it from. Um, I've imported a couple uh, Figmas before. Max, you have a couple of these too, right? Yeah. They're, they're just fun toys they're to good have. good toys. Yeah, Figma's uh, like a solid. If you want to just grab like a nice action figure, Figma is it's pretty hard to screw up. Unless you get a bootleg, in which yep. case they actually have a lot of bootlegs. I'm going to read off there. some of the bullet points for this thing because it's actually really funny. Um, it says, using the smooth yet poseable joints of Figma, you can act out a variety of different scenes. A flexible plastic is used for important areas, allowing proportions to be kept without compromising posability. The Figma includes a morph ball, which this one does as well, uh, as part of as was interchangeable parts for her arm cannon and when she fires missiles. Alternate hand parts include a clenched fist, uh, open hand, a hand for holding items, and the classic thumbs up hand. Uh, which you remember from Other M. The visor of her mask, as well as the areas of her hands, hips, and legs, make use of translucent parts for improved detail. And it comes with an articulated stand, uh, which allows for a variety of poses, cool. such as the ball. The ball. Which really needs it's that stand. just a separate piece entirely. Yeah. Yeah, I love this. Um, I might actually grab this Thank one. you for pointing that out, because um, I, I do want to point, like, this. she does not transform into that ball. No, no. That the would be insane. ball is an accessory. I do want that toy um, one day. Though. Anyway, you said that's out later this year? Yeah, October. Um, cool. 7,222 yen, or $66 USD. Yeah. Uh, I think they also got a Twilight Princess uh, Link and Zelda coming out soon. Yeah. Uh, which still I got, we got to see it. the Wild one, but. Yeah, that's right. I don't know what's going on with really that. Really cool. We got um, to see those at um, Comic-Con last year. Yeah. They're, they're really, really gorgeous. And uh, while we're screwing around with toys, uh, we got the latest Marvel Collector Core box. Uh, this month, uh, they are doing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, ahead of the movie. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, these are kind of like uh, kind of loot crates. It's, uh, this is Funko's whole kind of just monthly themed box. Uh, there's always kind of the same sort of style of thing. You always get, you always sort of know what you're getting, but not exactly. Yeah, you get a uh, pin, In a this patch. case, you get a Gamora pin, which is pretty neat. Uh, take a look. There we go. You can almost see that. It's very small. Uh, and then there's a Star-Lord patch. I want to see somebody who's just been who's been on this since the since the jump and has like the pins and patches all over a jacket. You want to see a human NASCAR? There we go. That's what I want. Um, yeah, and they got the usual kind of uh, lineup of stuff here. You know, you get a closer look at what's uh, what's in the box or what you might have missed. Uh, I like these because they show them in the prototype phases. They yeah. show you like how they put all this stuff together. You got a copy comic of in Secret here. Empire with a uh, limited edition cover. Nice. Uh, and then here's where we get to the fun stuff. Uh, here is a uh, Dorb's Rides of uh, Star Lord, and there in his fun his fun spaceship. What's the name of the spaceship? The Milano, like the cookie. The Millennium Falcon. Ah, get out of here. Okay, we take our toys out of the boxes here. So Dorb's are kind of like they're kind of like those old like Fisher Price toys, but you know with nerdy stuff instead. Uh, get out of the box. Get out of the box. Get out of the box. So here's the other part of the wing. And it clips in there, I guess. There you go. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you know. These are really cute. If you are looking for stuff to put on your desk, uh, they do a pretty good job with this kind of stuff. Get get in there. There we go. There cool. we go. Here, let's take a look. There we go. Look at that yeah, little one. He's so happy. This is what uh, Chris Pratt looks like after he has uh, seafood, because he's actually got horrible shellfish allergies. <laughs> and his entire head swells up. Now, Max, wh uh, what if you want some clothes? I, well, I feel like there's a shirt in here, because there usually is. There's a shirt. So we'll tear this one open. Um, so here we got the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 logo, uh, including some drawings of Funko Pops. Uh, so there's that right there. Okay. These are, these are I, really, I always like the color scheme on these things. So I gotta say, we see a lot of these. Uh, Funko Pops kind of have like a, a certain style down. They've kind of, you kind of know what you're getting for the most part. This one is something of a surprise. It's Rocket and Baby Groot. They're both bobbleheads. Oh, wow. So you've got a bobblehead on, on Baby Groot and on Rocket. Is that really double bobble? Yeah, double bobble. That's kind of Double incredible. bobble, triple trouble. So there you go. Uh, yeah, if you're interested in Marvel Collector Core, uh, look it up online. They also, of course, do uh, DC, and uh, they do uh, they do a, a Vertigo one where you open it up and it's just uh, it's just full of bees. Vertigo's, <laughs> Vertigo's intense. Uh, now, Max, it's been about five or six weeks since the Nintendo Switch launched. I'm still hopelessly addicted to it. I have so many games in this thing. I'm playing all my indie games on it. Uh, I'm playing stuff like Mr. Shifty and Snake Pass, and uh, I just started Wonder Boy, which is really beautiful. Nice. But my biggest issue with the Switch, which many of you are probably noticing in very long extended plays of Zelda and mm -hmm. Sasuna uh, release Mario Kart, 
uh, is the battery life. It's about two and a half, three hours long. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, depending yeah, on which getting I feel off like airplane mode or your brightness and stuff like that. I'm guessing they picked a battery that was kept the cost down for yeah. the device. Uh, obviously, if you you know buy like an iPad or something, there are way better batteries out there yeah. to put into devices, uh, but there are also a wide variety of uh, external batteries you can get. Yeah, which uh, I have. I got like a RAV one. I also tried out an Anchor one, which are really cool. Um, they're kind of heavy. They feel It feels sort of like a like just a, a handgun clip or something like that. Yeah. Like it's just this big blocky thing to bring yeah, around everywhere. So it doesn't necessarily lend itself to portability as much as you'd want it to. Uh, that said, there's an Indiegogo, which is kind of like a Kickstarter, for this new thing called the Switch Charge. It's a battery case or your Nintendo Switch. So all in one unit right here adds 12 hours of battery life. It's got additional game slots so you can actually store physical cartridges on the back. And they put a brand new kickstand on it uh, because the kickstand on the Switch right now, let's be honest, isn't that great. So uh, this thing has already been funded. It's at 265% of its $80,000 goal, uh, which is kind of amazing. Yeah, so it's, it's probably getting made. Uh, obviously, with stuff like this, it kind of remains to be seen how it actually performs. But did that you said, screen cap that? Uh, yeah. Just yeah, it just went up a couple thousand since then. Okay. So yeah, eighty-five dollars gets you one switch charge. Uh, it comes with a power supply. That's free worldwide shipping on that thing. You can also spend an extra fifteen get switch uh, screen protectors, which they're doing for that. You can get, for twenty-five, you can get a carrying case. So if you wanted a carrying case and this thing, it's eighty-five dollars plus another twenty-five. Not the cheapest solution in the world, but. Um, it's pretty damn cool. Yeah, I think we're gonna gradually like see more and more kind of like bits and pieces of peripherals for yep. the Switch just kind of coming out. I love that Nintendo just announced the um, the arms colors for the the, the Joy Cons, the yeah. neon yellow. I might jump on that because mm -hmm. those things are gorgeous. They're really cool. Um, I still like. I just want to see them make more like weird stuff to go with that. Like you know, and I also I'm terrified of buying something that's totally crappy and, and having to return it and get something different. Yeah, but. I agree, which I think, like, you know, the jury's still out on this thing. Like, we don't know if it's going to be a bust or not. But right now, I think I really like the sort of solution that, the, you know, third parties are coming up with uh, how, to, how to sort of fix one of the biggest issues, which is battery life. Like I said, I love my Switch, and this is definitely something I want to look into. Uh, we'll see if we can reach out for a review unit and maybe do an unboxing on this show, depending on how cool the packaging is. But, yeah, it's the kind of thing I want to play around with. I want to see if it looks like it's not too cumbersome and it doesn't yeah. feel like when like a dad puts one of those big like construction yeah. worker screen protectors. There's my like boy that. Kevin. You can see him there oh, and they bop, just hit bop, it with their bop. paws. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if you want to check this out, it's just on Indiegogo. Uh, look up Switch Charge. Should be easy to find. Yep. Uh, that's what it looks like. So take a look. Uh, now, speaking of little indie games and stuff, we just checked out a game called Flint Hook. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of like a pixel arty kind of bionic commando approach, but with some rogue-like tendencies. Yeah. Let's take a look. Hey everybody, Max and Brian here for Up at Noon, and we are playing Flint Hook, which is a fun little indie game that is out in the wild now. We're playing this on PS4, but this is a kind of a, uh, you know, pixel platformer in which you have a flint hook, I guess? It's like yeah. a hook for climbing I things. I don't like this ghost at all. Yeah. Uh, it's also got some uh, rogue light elements, okay. um, which means that you'll die and uh, die and die again. Yeah. But it's uh, cool. I don't know what to do with this ghost. I'm not a fan of him. I'm getting yeah. away from him. You gotta pick up the bomb and use the ghost bomb. Uh, yeah, the yeah. music's really good. The art direction's really cool. Uh, we just got tipped off about this game yesterday, and now we're playing it. So you should definitely check it out, too. Uh, we're not gonna get too far, because it's hard. It's a very difficult game. I'll be completely honest with you. I'm, I'm pretty good at video games. I've been playing them most of my life. Can't get in there yet. This is a, this is a hard ass game. Yeah, it's got some kind, of, uh, some kind of Bionic Commando grappling stuff going on, but yep. you can kind of do it in all 360 degrees. I really like the, the sort of squared off loops there. It gets a cool look. Yeah. You uh, get some meat. Oh, wow, space meat. My favorite flavor of meat. This is sick, man. What is that, man? Uh, yeah, so you're like kind of a space pirate, I guess, and you're just going around and... Yeah, so you've also got this... Whoa, what the hell? You've got this, like, time-bending option, too, so that's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah. Uh, uh -oh. We didn't show up, but basically, uh, when you... Damn. Uh, when, you, when you're about to start a game, uh, there's a lot of different little perks and things. I saw one of them is you get a delicious shiny apple when you board a new spaceship. So if you like apples, this might be the game for you. Yeah, well, there's really not a lot of games where you, you can 
have a great time as a fan of the fruit known as apple. Truly. This game is gorgeous. Yeah, it really like, is. I really like the animation here. I don't like this man, this little like anorexic Dr. Robotnik. These guys kind of remind me of like uh, like Craig McCracken, Gendy Tartakovsky animation. Like, yeah. They kind of look like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Oh god. These are really cool. S space bugs. The Mulgas. Damn. Yeah, so do we know how much this is? Is like, what, 20 bucks? 10 bucks? Uh, I believe so. We Something should probably like should have looked that up. We should have looked that up. We're bad at our jobs. Yeah. We, we failed history. Yep. As kids. Yep, and math. And that was kids' history, too. There's yeah. really only like seven the years. The history of, that. of kids. But you always wanted to know where babies came from. You know what they come from, right? Skybird. Skybird, yes. He drops a garbage bag with the babby inside, and then you gotta <laughs> be a dad forever. Yes. That gentleman stork comes by, and he starts <laughs> uh, <laughs> putting those little uh, little flesh pods down the old chimney. So yeah, that's Flint Hook. You can get up in here and uh, shoot the pirates and do the rope stuff. Oh, and fall on the spikes like I just did. Oh god, it's not going well. Now is this uh... I should probably die and show, show people what's up with that. Yeah, you can do that. You can always die. Oh god, more parrots. Okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. Of... So is this uh is this procedural generated or is this uh I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Procedural generated. What am I saying? That sounds bad. Oh, like, you unlocked a new ghost. Like we said, we failed kids history. Yeah, so. kids history and word saying. Word saying is the one where you have to say the word. America's toughest class. But yeah, that's Flint Hook. It's out now. Go check it out. Yeah. And remember, kids history. Kids the history. Most important class in school. Truly. Go to school. For a little bit. The and end. Then you can leave. Yeah. Leave it like two. Leave it, yeah. It, leave it when the big, the, the last bell rings. Then yeah. you can go home. The third, the third bell of the day, you're out. Do they just still have bells at school? No, now they just text you. Yeah. <laughs>
kind of just like the most D-list, like just lame characters possible. Which is cool that we have that option because yeah. a lot of other toy lines don't even get that deep into the cut. Yeah. Uh, but with Star Wars, they pretty much at some point have made everyone, which is kind of awesome. They've really, they've really gone kind of like they've gone overboard in terms of just like the weirdest stuff you could get. Like um, when Rogue One came out, we were all really excited to buy Moroff, that piss-footed Yeti. Yeah, the piss-footed Yeti. Now here's a figure I've actually had for a second. Uh, this is Elon Slizbagano. Yeah, who's uh, my cousin. He's the <laughs> he's basically the drug dealer that Obi-Wan meets in the Outlander bar in that uh, that Coruscant scene in episode two. Uh, and this dude just has like the Death Sticks guy. He's just got, yeah, the Death Sticks guy. Yeah. He's just selling he's just selling like I, I don't even know if they're supposed to be drugs or cigarettes, but he comes with the Death Sticks. Like these little tiny test tube things. He's got this dumb hand. It's actually like a really nice action figure. He's got a blaster. He's got these like nice like kind of uh, boot cut dockers to wear. Those were very fetching at the time. This is also the guy that played uh, Mouse in yeah, the Matrix. Yeah, Mouse in the Matrix. The guy who complains about the eggs or whatever. Yep. Uh, and so he's part of this set. He comes with this bar. I got this for a while. Uh, I also got the other half of the set, which is the other half of the bar, which you can see sort of how do you connect these stupid things. Just get in there. They don't even click together properly. But I got Obi-Wan, uh, and it's specifically, not just regular Obi-Wan. This Obi-Wan comes with a lightsaber, sort of. It's like stuck to his, his belt. What he really comes with is just a shot glass. That's great. So this is Obi-Wan who's so sick of Anakin's crap that he wants to go and pound shots and get off for drugs at a nightclub. So this is boozing Obi-Wan. Yeah, you can put him on the ground. He's all like, he's, I don't want to buy any death sticks. He's got his like funny... You, like, and, you and I both have that Star Wars uh, action figure book that yep. shows off all the different iterations. And I think it's very odd to see how many times they've made toys out of characters who are really well known, but uh, were slightly different for just like half a second. Like, yep. Obi-Wan looks a little disheveled in this scene, and he's drinking, and they're like, yeah, we'll make a toy of he's him. He's like weirdly articulated for a guy who's just having a drink. Like I think it's so he can lay on the ground. Well. Yeah, he can do this. Yeah, he, he can put his legs all floppy. He can pass out behind uh, the bar. Now, that's not the only really weird D-list character I got. I also got Gragra. You might remember Gragra from no, the famous scene. No, you don't remember scene. Gragra. I remember Gragra. You definitely the... don't remember Gragra. Gragra is the, is the Mos Espa uh, frog saleswoman. Uh, uh, who Jar Jar tries to steal the frog from, and then the frog goes flying across the screen, and hits the bulb in the face, and there's a whole to Scrooge Doe Pot slay mo scene. Another um, another character you see on screen for like four seconds. Yeah. Once again, really cool design. Yep. Uh, excessively articulated, like really a ton like ball joint shoulders, like lots of lots of cut joints. Uh, the the mouth is basically hinged, so she's like a hungry hungry hippo. Like there's two joints in there, and if you like you push you push it forward, and her jaws open. And there's like a tongue in there. You can barely even see it. But like, this is a character who sells frogs in the background of episode one. And they made this excessively like complex toy of her. So you can reenact the Jar Jar scene and she can sell some more frogs. Now, it doesn't stop there. Here's, here's one that makes a lot more sense. Uh, this is the, you, stop doing that. That's terrible. That's, that scene was deleted from the, from the films. Uh, here's one of the band members. Um, this was actually a mail away exclusive back in I think '97. Mm -hmm. um, you had to you go to the same the, barber the band club. Uh, yeah, this is so the the thing that sucks about buying the the band figures is they're all the same dude. They just come with like different instruments. So basically, if you wanted to have an entire cantina band, you'd have to buy this dude like five times, and then just like have extras of all the of all the flutes and stuff. Yeah, imagine having that specific problem. Yeah, it's a weird problem to have. What's weird is at this point uh, they didn't. Uh, having articulated elbows was really uncommon for those figures. Mm -hmm. Like this was, I think, I think this might have been the first uh, Kenner figure to have uh, jointed elbows. Now, I didn't get this on purpose. This was something we got for an unboxing. Incredibly weird. Back in 1978, the first creature from Star Wars, not like a not like a humanoid alien you'd see in the cantina, but the first like monster Kenner made was an accessory for the Death Star playset, which was supposed to be the Dianoga, which is of course like the little tentacle thing that grabs Luke. <laughs> the star. But they didn't have any like concept art or photos or anything like it. Would, the prop didn't even have those things on it. So they basically were like, "What do you think that thing looks like from the neck down?" So they like invented this terrifying like Loch Ness monster with like a screaming mouth. And uh, General Giant has since taken it and made like a giant version. The normal one was like this big. Get that purple penis out of my face! <laughs> stop! Stop it! It's not, it's not purple, it's green, it's not a penis. It is it's now. A, it's a Dianoga. No, I wanted to point out that Kenner has sort of a long history of just adding details that are not necessarily necessary. Like, uh, here's uh, Max Rebo's legs and his little poop diaper that he wears. Yeah, there we go. That's how we're ending the show today. No, he's like George Clinton. He gets hot up on stage, so he's got to wear like a, like a nice terry cloth. Yeah, just like George Clinton. Yep. Anyway, uh, we got to wind things up.
Uh, big thanks to our sponsor, Cheese It Grooves. Again, if you want to win uh, a Switch, copy of Breath of the Wild, and six months worth of worth of Cheese It Grooves, head to go.ign.com slash Cheese It Grooves. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for sponsoring our show, guys. Yeah, seriously. Um, and for the snacks. Uh, um, we have some cool stuff next week. Can't really tease it. Can we tease it? What is next week? We got some cool, we got definitely some really cool video games We're, to show we, next we, week. we have a flautist. A genuine flautist What's is coming that? by. What it's someone that? who plays the flout. Oh, really? Yeah. No, not really. We no, don't have, that's not the name. We don't have somebody playing a the flautist? flute on our show. It is a flautist. Yeah. Actually, we have an oboner, which is a, a, a guy who plays Shut the oboe. Up. It's not true. No. Uh, three o'clock today, Pacific time. That's two hours from now. We're putting a brand new episode of Link Together. That's uh, my show that I do with Zach Ryan, where we play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild with two Joy-Cons split in half between two people. It's a really good episode. Spoilers, it is the first one where we don't die. I don't know how we pulled that off, but you should watch it and check it out. If you missed last week's, uh, we had a really awesome cameo. Just uh, look up Link Together on YouTube and give it a shot. That's our show. I don't know if that show's funny anymore because you guys have actually gotten good at playing Zelda co-op. Oh, it's it's still funny because we're still bad at... Still weird. Yeah, we're still bad at it. Anyway. Yeah, that's our show. That's up at noon. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and these two men are going to fly away in their legal marriage They're to the back of this They're going to a jazz over. festival! Ah, oh, crap. I dropped my figure in Dan. We'll be back next week. Goodbye, everybody.